Hello and welcome to Between the Stacks, a podcast about libraries and library people. I am your host Anna Ao. As usual, I have a guest today with me in this episode. So, hello and welcome, John. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is John Connolly. I currently serve as a managing librarian for a suburban library on the east coast of the United States, a public library. It's a very busy library with eight branches, and I blog at beyondbookshelves dot com. I know that you have a story about your own personal struggles, and I would love to hear it. Okay. When I was fourteen, my family moved to the Chicago suburbs, to a tiny town of five hundred people in central Wisconsin. We were fortunate to have dial-up internet. There was no cable. Television reception was spotty. Our lifeline to culture, entertainment, and ideas was our regional library. There was always something on the shelf for us. But beyond the books and other media, we were in the middle of the Harry Potter craze at that time. Events and other cultural affairs would be hard in the library. We attended shows and concerts there, and we had made relatively frequent visits to acquire books, tapes, and other materials. But it took almost half an hour to drive there. In my teens, I began to struggle emotionally. I had difficulty regulating my anger, and I would slip into low periods that, looking back, I can recognize as depression. I didn't adjust well to rural life, and my family didn't understand what was happening to me. My father died when I was seventeen, and I entered a rocky period of trauma and strife with my family members. When I went off to college, it was like a revelation for my life. I wanted to do everything. I played on the baseball team, joined clubs, starred in a play with the theater group, and yes, worked as a student assistant in the library. I worked there for three years, through ups and downs, and there were plenty of both. I would swing from elated to depressed. I would struggle to complete class assignments, and I generally muddled through academia with a passing grade, barely. But my anger was still a problem, and I was struggling to find balance in my life. The library was like a comforting background to my life. The library director suggested I keep working in libraries, but I was often another adventure, bouncing between the need for excitement and the crushing weight of emotional turmoil. I graduated and worked in other industries. I was a journalist for a short time before our newspaper folded, lost to the financial crisis of two thousand eight. I worked as a bank teller, but was miserable there. I got married, and we had a child. I eventually decided to go back into the field I had been truly happy in: libraries. I enrolled in graduate school and found a job cataloging on a contract for a federal agency. I got my start in cataloging before branching out. I worked for a company that produced library software while going through graduate school. The work was challenging, and I traveled a lot. But my mental health suffered. And my young family bore the brunt of my mood swings. I eventually landed my first job as a librarian at a small rural art museum. For a time, I thrived. The work was meaningful, and I had a lot to do. Collections needed a lot of updating and maintenance. Visitors needed to be given tours in our fabulous rare book collection, and there was a huge backlog of archives that needed to be processed. The job fit me well, and I waded into helping design library programs and events, and I took on outreach and other duties. But I began slowly to break down under the burdens of the work. There's a term in the library field: rock star librarian. It generally refers to the high achievers in the field who produce great content, work long hours, publish articles in scholarly journals, and serve on committees and working groups at the state and national level. The rock star librarians gather a lot of attention and are recognized by awards in the field. I think for this period of my life, I aspire to be that kind of librarian, but the pressures of that paradigm can be dangerous for somebody like me. I became unstable under the strain. I would throw myself into my work to the point of exhaustion, and my mood would crater after a couple of months. I became impossible to work with, and to live with. After a particularly nasty episode, I went for help. And was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. It's difficult to describe the mix of feelings my diagnosis brought. I felt shame, largely because of the stigma surrounding mental health that I was steeped in. I felt guilty, like I didn't deserve the label bipolar, 
they should have been able to soldier on without help. But I also felt relief. A lot of things made sense to me. Once I was on medication, my mood stabilized and I could function much more easily, though my highs and lows still came and went. I now understand that I am a librarian with a disability. It's an invisible disability, but it's still real. I can't perform my duties the way I was sometimes like, and I need to shepherd my resources with care and attention. I've come to embrace this about myself, and it means dialing back my enthusiasm and moderating myself at my highest so that I have the energy to handle myself at my lowest. Still, the pressures to perform are very great. I realized that when I moved on to a public library in a busy suburban environment. Public librarians do tremendous work. We educate, we advocate, we support, and we care. The emotional toil of public librarianship is huge. We're on the front lines of social need. Everybody left behind and neglected by our society finds their way to the library. It's the only public space where you can be without having to pay for the experience. Librarians work tirelessly to close the digital divide, to support lifelong learning, and to provide access to information of all kinds. But the key word in my prior sentence is tirelessly. At the heart of our narratives about librarians lies a myth. The superhero librarian. Like the rock star librarian, superhero librarians can do many things. They can provide readers advisory. They can do reference interviews. They can find answers like magic. They can teach you how to use a computer, check your email, find your tax forms, print your documents, find a doctor. The list goes on and on and on. We handle abuse. We receive complaints. And we see and recognize true needs. People without homes people who can't afford Netflix or cable, people who can't afford children's books, people who don't have a safe place to be, who cling to the library space as a respite from the outside world. It is difficult to see the needs and not be tempted to step into the gap, and many, many librarians step into that gap. They serve roles for which they're unequipped, understaffed, underfunded, and untrained. There's no need, no end to the needs of the calls of librarians' time and talents, and the sacrifices are made without fanfare or praise. But should it be that way? Here in the United States, our libraries often go underfunded, but the asks on our librarians seem to ever increase. This is very much the case following a worldwide pandemic. Moving forward, our programs will have to be both in person and online. Like so many things, it's both and, not either or. We must do more with less. Librarians are experienced at playing this game, but the game stretches our librarians to the breaking point. As a librarian with a disability, I have to distance myself from the cultural expectations of the library field. I can only do so much. Our patrons sometimes have unrealistic expectations of what I can accomplish. Because the culture surrounding libraries and librarians is steeped in these lofty expectations, this is very difficult. The temptation to arrive early and stay late is always there. To do more work off the clock. To take a personal interest in the needs beyond what we can do professionally. But if I go that far, I'll risk hurting myself and hurting my family. My limitations still make me feel uncomfortable. Am I a bad librarian for not giving more? I'm of the belief that the best future for librarianship considers the limitations of librarians and shifts our culture into a healthier work-life balance. I firmly believe that if patrons were aware of our limitations, they would understand and appreciate us more, not less. In the wake of the pandemic, libraries are making difficult choices about what they can offer to our communities because they have fewer resources at their disposal. As we continue to serve our communities, we need your help to keep us balanced Advocate for good funding. Volunteer at the library to help alleviate staff burdens. And if you see your librarians at the library, a kind and supportive word or two might go a long way toward brightening their day. Hardship is a part of the human condition, but... I do not think anyone should feel like they are alone in that and feel that help is beyond reach. I am a researcher. I love what I do. 
I am very good at what I do, and I work really hard. However, it does not mean I do not face any obstacles. I try my best to find a solution whenever there is a problem, but sometimes the solution is just not looking for me. Not being able to find a solution to the problem annoys or even irks me more than the problem itself, and that is usually my immediate reaction when I am facing a seemingly unsolvable problem. Asking for help is not my default. On top of that, my anxiety gets in my way sometimes, which makes finding a solution even more difficult. I think that is because I am good at what I do. I am supposed to be the expert or the person who has the answers. Also, I think experts feel that they would be judged for asking for help because they feel that they have to be perfect in order to uphold what. Makes them the expert in the first place. When they are so good at what they do, they are expected to be at least as good in the future. And because of this, they are not always seen as human beings who have human problems and emotions. They are seen as machines. When anyone is perceived like that, asking for help just feels like something that discredits their qualifications somehow. This applies to not only academia but librarianship as well. I think creating a healthy workplace where library staff are not judged for addressing the limits or asking for help is somewhere to start. There's also another thing, John. You mentioned sometimes work and life feel like a trade-off, and that is detrimental to library staff's mental health. I think maintaining work-life balance is a way to look after their own mental health. What are your thoughts on how to actually know where to draw a boundary between work and life? So it's always going to be different, right? Everybody's situation is different, and in librarianship, in particular, there are in our culture religious overtones to the way that we approach everything. It's been pointed out many times that. Libraries are like temples; they're temples for knowledge and learning, and this is not accidental. Because over the course of hundreds and hundreds of years, libraries were built into religious institutions and then developed into the sort of organizations that they are today. And the problem with that is that when you have a professional field that's steeped in a religious tradition, the temptation is to Ask the professionals to work with religious fervor and religious purity, and this is deeply problematic. What we need to do is to come to a healthier approach to understanding our limitations. Where does that line get drawn?、Um, I think it it gets drawn on a professional scale,、uh, not on an emotional one, and that we need to begin understanding ourselves as librarians. That this is a job that we are doing. It's a function for society, and it's very good for society. But that we cannot hurt ourselves in the pursuit of this. That we need to set limitations. The limitations will be different for everyone because the tolerances are going to vary. But it's very important that this understanding kind of permeates our culture. That it helps. The people who work within our field to be empowered to take time off, to step back, to not invest themselves emotionally, to avoid that risk of burnout, and it also means that we must have the support of our supervisors and managers in the pursuit of good, healthy boundaries. Yeah, I absolutely agree that having a good supervisor, a supportive supervisor, can change a lot of things in the work environment. The staff will feel that it's okay to address their own limits, and it's okay to take some time off for themselves because their own health, both physical and mental health, matter as well. They will be able to work better if they are just healthier. It's better for everyone if they don't burn out from work. I think this part is pretty easy to understand. Besides that, do you think there's something else library associations can do in this? Re- 